Hey brothers, this is Patrick Sullivan, Catholic Lay Evangelist with One Small House. I'm with you again for this month to basically get stronger, get healthier in the spiritual life, and to work together to get to heaven. So hopefully we're doing that. This month I have something pretty interesting to talk to you about, and that is, well let's start this way. It's of an ancient story actually, an ancient Jewish legend, and it goes something like this. In a place somewhere where you could never find, you could never get to, in the mountains, there exists a monster, a, a creature, a freak, really, that lives in isolation. And the problem with this monster, though, the, the strangest thing, is that this monster looks just like you and me. In fact, the monster's so much like you and me that uh, he can talk. He walks upright. Um, he's like us in all things, except except that he's tied to the earth still by his navel cord. Strange, I know. Now, the point of the story, I suppose, is that it's supposed to point to the reality that if we continue to be tied to the earth, if we continue to allow ourselves to, to bind ourselves to things of the flesh, don't look upward towards heaven, look downward. If we continue to do that, then we will be like this beast. And in the legend, that beast, if, if you happen to feel sorry for him, if you heard his cries and his wailing throughout the mountains, and you approached and you thought for a moment that it was safe to be near him, possibly to help him, well, if you stepped into his inner circle, he would quite quickly and mercilessly devour you. Now, I want you to juxtapose that story, though, for just one moment with another story, a real story from the book of Genesis. This is where the, the angels leave Abraham, remember? The Lord was having this wonderful conversation with Abraham about how many will it take for him to save Sodom and Gomorrah. Well, the angels walk towards the city and they find Abraham's nephew. They find Lot. And if you know the story, and it's a very odd story, and there's some really terrible things that happen there, but... Lot does do one thing really well, and we have to give him this. That when the angels come inside his home, when they enter into his circle, and all the townspeople come out and they try to basically do terrible things, Lot protects them. And I think that's worth mentioning because here we have this, well, quite a real juxtaposition, do we not? In the second story, Lot, this real figure from history, Lot, this person whose actions and decisions changed all of world history, actually. He says essentially to himself and to the angels, he doesn't know they're angels, by the way. When you step into my home, when you step into my circle, I am here for you. He's not like that beast, that freak, that monster who, if you step into his home, into his circle, he will devour you. And I bring that up this month because the question we all need to be asking ourselves, especially from time to time, especially in a world like we're living right now, we need to be asking ourselves, what kind of men are we? What have we become and what are we becoming? When we say, you should be like me, or you should do like me, you should speak like me, what are we saying to the world? And my hope for you, my genuine heartfelt hope for you is you decide to, to speak and to do, to behave somewhat like Lot. That maybe your wife or your children, your friends or your co-workers, maybe even the people who don't like you, okay, they exist. <laughs> All of them cannot help but say, you know what? No matter what is happening, I know with a certainty that it is, is just real and palpable. I know that I am safe in his house, in his circle. It kind of reminds us, doesn't it, of another ancient story also to do with Abraham is when he was supposed to bring his son Isaac for the binding, you'll recall that. And the Lord seems to say, yeah, bring him. I want to sacrifice him for me. And in just the very last moment, the angel steadies Abraham's hand. And we've always asked, why is it? Why did God do that? Does he want us to be willing to sacrifice our children? And the answer is no. Remember, in the ancient world, it would have been normal for a deity to demand such a thing. But we get this lesson, this revolutionary idea entering into the world at that early time, in that early period. That even if you and all that you love are just another bargaining chip for the deities of the world, 
with this God, with the one called the Lord, the Lord God. Everything you love, everything you cherish, everything that is good is safe with this God. That's the biblical revolution there that did change human history. And I'm getting a sense of that with this too. I'm getting the sense, and I hope you are as well, that when you decide to say to yourself and declare it with your life, you're safe with me. Come into my circle. I will protect you too. Come into my life and I will be praying for you. I will be virtuous around you. I will help you to strive for heaven. When you do that, you are giving them a little taste, an ancient taste, not of some legend of one man devouring another, but you are actually giving them a taste of the true God. Enter into my life. Be around me. Because all that you love is protected and safe here. Why? Because I am a man of God. And I follow the God-man, Jesus Christ. I hope you can see it. I hope you believe it. And I do hope you'll become another man just like he was.